Hello viewers, I am Dr. Esmat. I'm from the Orthopedic Department of Hospital Pakar Sultanah Fatimah in Malaysia. Today, I'll be presenting our study on lower lumbar segmental motion, a correlation of clinical symptoms with MRI and dynamic radiograph. First of all, the authors declare no conflict of interest in this study. The study has already been approved by the Medical Research and Ethics Committee. The diagnosis of lumbar instability as the cause of back pain uh, remains a challenging affair. Dynamic radiograph is commonly proposed to diagnose instability, but no study was performed to prove the correlation with both clinical symptoms and MRI findings. The main objective of this study to determine the association between clinical symptoms with lumbar segmental motion and MRI at the level of L4, L5 and L5S1. The study took place in our hospital. This is a cross-sectional study. All patients, uh, totaling 50 of them, who presented at orthopedic clinic from the 1st April of 2019 until 31st October of 2019 with lower back pain who have done MRI lumbosacral. The inclusion criteria includes all patients aged 18 and above who presented with lower back pain and have undergone MRI lumbosacral. The exclusion criteria includes patients with previous history of spine trauma or surgery, vertebral infection, congenital spine deformity, as well as pediatric and pregnant patients. The dynamic radiograph was done according to methods described by Dvorak in 1991. Both X-rays was uh, taken in position of maximum extensions as well as flexion. For the measurement of the dynamic radiograph, both lumbar horizontal and angular motion in each segment was measured using method described by White and Punjabi. 4 mm and more horizontal translation were considered unstable, while the difference of more than 20 degree at L4, L5 or more than 25 degree at L5, S1 for angular motion were considered unstable. Three parameters reported in the MRI were number one, this degeneration or DD, which is classified into five grades based on Furman's criteria, facet joint osteoarthritis, which is classified into four grades according to Grogan's method, and a ligamentum flavum hypertrophy, which is classified as being either negative or positive depending on its presence. The clinical assessment tool used to assess the symptoms of back pain were visual analog scale or VAS and Revised Oswestive Disability Index Questionnaires, or ODI. This is the flowchart of the study. Patients with lower back pain and have done MRI lumbar sacral uh, from the 1st of April until the 31st of October in 2019, the total number of patients were 59. Uh, eight of them uh, were uh, traumatic and one of them uh, was scoliotic. They were excluded from the study. The final sample size was 50 patients. They were approached during the clinical visit. Uh, consent were obtained, dynamic radiograph, ODI and VAS score was taken from the patient. Later on, the MRI report and motion measurement uh, was performed uh, and data analysis ensued. For the association between demographic characteristic with both motion and MRI, they were studied using chi-square independent t-test as well as one-way ANOVA test. Association of MRI parameters uh, to predict ODI at both levels were analyzed using multiple linear regression, while the association of MRI to predict VAS were investigated using ordinal logistic regression. The significance uh, level was set at p value of less than 0 0.05. For the results, this is the demographic data. Uh, we can see the mean age of the patients uh, were 43 years old. It is worth to be noted here that most of the patients with back pain actually has normal BMI. This is the biodemographic data and lumbar segmental motion. We did not find any significant correlation when comparing the demographic characteristic of age, gender, BMI, as well as occupation. When comparing age and MRI findings, we did found uh, a significant correlation in all level for FJO and LFH and only uh, for at a level of L4, L5 for this degeneration. The multiple linear regression to predict ODI at L4, L5 did not show a model of good fit. However, at the level of L5, S1, we did find a significant correlation in horizontal motion. 
for the multivariable ordinal logistic regression uh, to predict VAS at the level of L4, L5, we did find that uh, two parameters are significantly correlated, which is FJO grade 3 as well as angular motion. However, no significant correlation were found uh, when predicting VAS with multivariable ordinal logistic regression at the level of L5 and S1. Iguchi concluded that patients with more than 3 mm translation and more than 10 degree angulation simultaneously actually showed significantly severe symptoms when compared to either radiographic findings separately. In the present study, it was established that patients with 1 degree increase in angular motion at L4, L5 is 1.17 times more likely to have more severe VAS, while patients with 1 mm more in horizontal lumbar segmental motions at L5, S1 will have higher ODI score by 5.89%. Zhang in his study revealed that at the level of L4, L5, FJO grade 3 when combined with DD grade 4 and presence of LFH exhibited higher incidences of segmental instability. While, however, Matue found no significant correlation when comparing FJO with severity of clinical symptoms. In present study, it was determined that patients with FJO grade 3 are 0.08 times less likely than patients with FJO grade 4 to have more severe VAS. In conclusion, Increasing horizontal lumbar segmental motion is associated with higher ODI score, while increasing angular motion along with higher FJO grade correlate with more severe VAS. Comprehensive assessments of patients using both clinical and radiological methods available are still of paramount importance in diagnosing and managing lumbar instability. With that, I thank you.